It is the day after my birthday and we wanted to hang out with Michelle and John today. So we've actually met up here in Orlando at the uh, Texas Day Brazil here in Orlando so that we can enjoy my birthday meal, triple B&E style. So we get to see Michelle and John Paul and Michelle brought Peyton along so that we can enjoy a birthday meal together. I don't know who she's happier to say. This is the real present. <laughs> this is the present right here. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and every Monday we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we're having breakfast, you'll be alerted to it. It is day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Six. Yes, it is. Of beef, butter, bacon, and egg. We're starting off with the staples. And so here's what we have. People are going to look and be like, well, you keep saying like two or three eggs isn't enough food, but we don't really have three eggs. <laughs> I've got four eggs, four slices of bacon, and a carnivore mug bread. Rachel's got three eggs, three slices of bacon, and a carnivore mug bread. But... You gotta remember the carnivore mug bread is three tablespoons of pork rind crumbs. Leave a link for that up here, as well as a tablespoon of butter and an egg. So she's really got four eggs, and, and it's I delicious. Got five eggs. I need a fork though. Oh, I have a fork for you. Yay! Then we have coffee, and the coffee is made. We each have a tablespoon of butter in the coffee, and do you like the foamy top on there? Look it at is that really foam. nice. How did you achieve that? Um, I have the AeroDisc container for the Vitamix, which isn't very useful for a lot of things. It but makes it, mayonnaise. It'll make whipped cream. Makes things good like foam. That. But that's what it does. It basically adds air into your mixture. So if you put your coffee in here. Fluffs it up. And then you add the butter. It really brings it all together, but then gives you that really fluffy top on the top. Like they say that you could put skim milk in there, but we don't drink skim milk. And make whipped cream. Then I also have dessert, mm. which is here. I was going to say, put it right oh, in Oh, you that want bread. it on there. No, that's not how I want it. So it's like a little bit more butter. But here's my new way to really, when I want a treat, I literally put salt on my butter. It's actually really it. good. And that ups my fat. Um, and then also, if we are still hungry, because we've been talking about eat until you're full. Well, what if I'm not full after I've done this? So what we do is we keep over here on the side prepped some eggs. of our prepped eggs. So we have some of our little ones we made in the oven as well as some hard-boiled eggs, and they're all here to the side. And if we want to eat when we're done with this, they're there. They're there. So how is your week going so far? Anything new coming up for you? Wow. Um, well, planning a baby shower is the thing. So I have um, – some gift certificates for like Target and, and Bed Bath and Beyond. Right. And my mom was like, we need to use those up. Yeah. So I'm going to go look for some of the pretties. You know, I really want to have like pretty water there, you know, with a, like in a glass. Excuse me. Nose are bothering In me. a glass container. So, and I don't have one of those glass containers that like right. dispense water. So I'm thinking Bed Bath and Beyond will probably have that. But yeah, we're in full Full swing baby shower planning mode. So you've got that. And then I just had to send Anthony to the store. Somebody stole the lug nuts off of our trailer. Wow. And at first I'm like, okay, maybe they just loosened up. And because what happened was we were driving down the road and all of a sudden we hear like thump to thump to thump. And we're looking, we're like, we don't have any flat tires. And I go out and what's happened is there was one lug nut holding the whole tire on. And it got loose, so it basically sheared off the lugs. Wow. It, it made the holes wider in the tire. So you're thinking, okay, maybe you just didn't tighten them enough. They came loose. Except when I went to the other side of the trailer, a different 
axle, because I have a tandem axle. Thank goodness. The front tire on the other side was also missing all the nuts but one. Now, I have not changed tires recently. I haven't done any work. And I find it hard to believe that eight lugs all loosen simultaneously. Right. To, so, yeah, somebody, I'm positive, somebody stole them off. So now Anthony Sad. is getting new lugs made and he's got to have like the tire change it over to another ram so that's what he's doing that's so sad so i wanted to mention your eggs because you're going to notice your eggs aren't they're under fully cooked. cooked but you i knew you had the carnivore mug bread to kind of sop it up and ex that's exactly what i'm going to do so i appreciate that and i didn't distress when i saw oh it's a little bit like juicy in there yeah but i did it intentionally because we just actually for our course released the lesson on eggs and one of the things that we didn't actually even talk about there, we talked about quality of eggs, right. which we've talked about before. Yeah. But but when it comes to your eggs, people ask all the time, like, is it safe to have raw eggs? In my personal opinion, yes. Even though we're not doctors, nurses, or health professionals, the chance of you getting salmonella from your eggs is so infinitesimal. Like, you have a better chance of winning the lottery. Well, I would love to win the lottery, P.S., just right. if you're in the market. Um, but, yeah, and we're not going to leave them out all day. Like, right. I'm going to sit down, and we're eating this in a sitting. So it's not like, oh, I'll just put this, and I'll see you in a couple of hours. Yeah, so <laughs> what you want to do is if you're going to use raw eggs for, like, your butter mayo or anything like that, putting it in your coffee, the key is look at the shells. Yeah. Um, make sure the shells don't have any cracks. If the shells have a crack in it, you don't want to use that as a raw one. Do a smell test on it. Eggs are good for smell this. Keep so it long. Like you're talking about like 60 to 90 days after they come out of the chicken's butt. Mm. They, they last for a long time. But the salmonella is on the shell. It's not on the inside. So that's why you don't see me separating eggs using the shell. I use my hand or you use one of those little egg separator tools or something like that. But when it comes to raw eggs, the protein that is in the egg white is better cooked. Like you're gonna get more of the protein if you use a cooked egg yolk. Okay. Like 90% bioavailability. But when it comes to the yolks, which is where all of the vitamins and nutrition are, do not throw out the yolks. We have demonized yolks in this country. I know. All Don't yolking aside. That, but that's where all of the nutrition is. That's where your vitamin D, that's all of the nutrition is in the yolk. There's like pretty much no nutrition really in the white. You wanna eat the yolk, but the funny thing is, is that though you want the whites cooked, you want the yolks uncooked as much as possible because the more uncooked it is, the more bioavailable all of the vitamins and nutrients are. So you got to find that happy medium. Don't like cook it to death. You want it, you want them to be a little soft if you can take it using the carnivore mug bread to that really helps. it up uh, or just putting it in something, you know. Um, you can do like a scotch egg, mm -hmm. undercook it a little bit, and then put it in your beef. And But you want to try to make them a little runny if you can. Okay, we're going to have some baby back ribs today, along with some ground beef, probably some eggs and stuff. Uh, but these ribs were on sale at Fresh Market when I went to get the bacon yesterday for $4 off a pound if you were on their like email member list. So $3 a pound for these delicious looking ribs. Lots of fat on here. Baby back ribs have a tremendous amount of fat. So I'm happy to eat this on a beef butter bacon egg. Now it, preparing it, going to be a little different. I'm just going to use some salt and pepper, a little bit of the Redmond's organic garlic pepper. Uh, we're going to cook these in the oven. I almost exclusively cook ribs on the smoker, but a lot of you guys don't have smokers. So I'm going to show you how we can prepare these in the oven. The first thing we need to do is take off this membrane. Now you may have never noticed this membrane before, but on the back there is a membrane. You want to take that off because you want to be able to get all of the salt and the seasonings into the ribs. Uh, this is also kind of hard to chew as well. So the easiest way to get this off, take a butter knife and you're going to see here where the bones are. Like there's a bone here, bone here, bone here. And we're just gonna choose any one of them and just kind of lift the membrane up a little bit and take your butter knife and slide it along the bone and kind of lift. And you can see how like I've now lifted that little pouch. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take like a paper towel and I'm gonna grab it. 
And the paper towel just really helps you to get a good grip on it because it's kind of slippery. And I'm just gonna push my finger all the way through to the other side and you're lifting it up off of the meat. Grab your paper, uh, the membrane with your paper towel and start pulling. And again, the paper towel is just helping me to get a better grip on the membrane. And once you have it loose on one side, you can just pull all the way across. And that's it, membrane is off. Now what we can do is take our seasoning. So we have Redmond, uh, you can use the kosher salt. If you have that, that's better. And then we're gonna put a little bit of the Redmond organic garlic pepper on here. But since I'm not cooking it in the smoker, this is optional, but if you wanna add that smoky flavor, use a little bit of the Redmond uh, smoked salt. And this is just salt that has been smoked. And so we're gonna just cover the whole thing on the one side. And I'm gonna make sure it gets in there. I'm gonna put that on there first, and I really want it on the other side as well. Then I'm gonna take some of the organic garlic pepper and put that on this side. And I'm gonna kind of press it in. This side is a little bit dry, so probably some of it probably won't stick, but I'm okay with that. We're gonna go ahead and flip this over. And same thing, we're gonna take the smoked salt, and I wanna put that in first because I wanna get that smoked flavor into the meat. Give it a good rub in. And then we're gonna take the organic garlic pepper, put that on there, and give it a little bit of that garlic flavor. It's got some pepper in there. And again, seasoning's completely optional. You can put whatever you know seasonings you want. Uh, make sure you're using a, a zero sugar uh, rub if you're using any kind of rub. Uh, the only thing you really do need, you need that salt. Okay, now you will notice I'm doing this on aluminum foil. So what we're gonna do is we are going to fold in the aluminum foil. We're gonna wrap this up. Uh, you could do this in butcher paper if you have any. Um, I just tend to like the aluminum foil and I'm also out of butcher paper. So we're gonna wrap this up like this. We're going to put it onto a tray like this. And we're gonna put this into the oven at 275 degrees, uh, we're gonna start off for about three hours and then we're gonna check it at that point. Yeah, I don't look very good. I'm having a bit of an allergy attack today and I have no idea what brought it on. I went outside, next thing I know, I was sneezing. So something in the air is bringing it on. Anyway, we're going to make some sort of bacon wrapped scotch eggs. The reason I say sort of is we're not using breakfast sausage. We're gonna use a mixture of ground beef and pork. We're gonna wrap the eggs with the ground beef and pork mixture and then wrap that in bacon, cook it in the air fryer. So let's get started. We're gonna start our eggs and I'm gonna cook them in the Instant Pot, but we're looking for like a medium boil. We don't want a hard boil. Uh, so I'm gonna cook it at two minutes inside of the Instapot and then I'm gonna quick release it. So I honestly don't know how many eggs I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna make whatever I have left in the carton and whatever we don't use, we can just eat. Uh, so I think I have about eight or nine of them in this carton here. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we're on pressure cook. And then we're gonna go pressure cook two minutes. And then when it's done, I'm gonna let it slow release for one minute, and then I'm gonna quick release the rest of the way. While everything else is going, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the outside mixture. And I'm gonna have a lot more than I need here. Uh, but what we're gonna do is after we're done, we're gonna go ahead and just make some extra meatballs. So I'm taking a pound of ground beef and a pound of ground pork, and we're gonna mix them together, put a little bit of spice in there. So I'm gonna add to this a little bit of the Redmond's organic season salt, probably about two teaspoons. And I'm also going to add a little bit of chili powder just to add some spice, probably about a teaspoon or so. And we'll go ahead and mix this all together. Okay, that looks good right there. So what we're gonna do is just wait for the eggs now. So that was perfect timing. Right as I finished up the ground beef, uh, it went off. We're at one minute since we were finished, so we're gonna go ahead and hit cancel here. And we're gonna come up here and quick release set. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, take off the top. We're gonna grab the trivet here, and we're gonna immediately bring this over and put it in some ice bath. 
to make it so that the cooking process stops. So go ahead and put that in there for a little while. That'll stop the cooking process, then we can go ahead and peel them. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start peeling these and see how they came out. So, let's see. I'm actually gonna peel them right over the water and put the shells right back in here. Now the key is, I don't wanna really break the white. I'm using eggs that I don't normally use, but we recently did a video on eggs, and so I have like a lot of different eggs and kind of eggs in the house. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just peel all these the best we can. So now what I did was I actually rolled out some of the meat and covered one of the eggs to see how much meat I needed, which is about three ounces. So I made a bunch of three ounce meatballs, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten each one of these out and cover the egg. Uh, so we're just gonna move them all over here. And I'm gonna take one of them, put some parchment paper over the top, and just roll it out. Uh, you could do this by hand. It just is a little bit easier if you have a nice flat piece. We're looking for the meat to be somewhere around uh, a quarter to a half inch thick. So you can see just like that. Now we just grab one of the eggs and basically wrap it around the meatball and basically just wrap it around the egg and, and form it into a meatball. Trying to keep the meat like even all the way around the egg. Okay, we've got five of them done. So we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping these with bacon and then while these are cooking, we can work on the rest of them. So I'm just gonna take some bacon here and we're gonna wrap it all the way around. And I'm gonna use two slices for each one of these. One of the things you wanna do is when you're wrapping this is try to start in the same area because this way you can put that area down and that'll help hold it together. Uh, so this way we can just put it down like that in the air fryer. Okay, I had to fight the kids for the air fryer. Uh, so it's hot, um, but dirty, but I cleaned off that one part. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, I think we're gonna do four at a time here. So we have some air that can go around them. So we're gonna go put four of these in here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna 360 for 10 minutes and try it that way. Okay, 10 minutes is up. Yeah, I figured that we were going to have to put this in a little bit longer to get the bacon the way we want it. We're going to go ahead and flip these over. And then we're going to put it in for like another eight minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at these. Oh, that looks good right there. So we're going to go ahead and put this off to the side. And uh, we're going to start the next four. The smoke from the bacon in the house is not helping my allergies. So I'm sorry that I look like garbage right now. But Rachel is not home and I can't let this go to waste. I wanna see what it looks like coming right out of the oven. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut this in half. Oh yes. That is absolutely perfect. That's exactly how I wanted it. Um, the yolk is just cooked. We're gonna go ahead and uh, give this a little try. Let's try it. Oh wait, I need the bacon. You cannot do this without bacon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is delicious. Um, that is really good. So I've got the other four in there. We're gonna cook the first round. Hopefully Rachel will be home in time so she can get these nice and fresh. Okay, Rachel is on her way home. So we just started the second 10 minute run on the scotch eggs. We're gonna check on the ribs now. One of the best ways to see if these are done is try to pick them up in the middle and see if they fall apart, which you can see right here, they're falling apart. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to open this up like this and I'm gonna put it under the broiler for just like three minutes to kind of crisp up the top. Okay. Mm, I see balls. <laughs> Family channel. I mean, it's accurate. It's right there. I'm interested to see what you think of these. So this here was just a meatball because it was like some extra meat and one slice of bacon wrapped around it. Okay. But that's not what I want you to try. Oh, it's this one? The yeah. big balls? The big ball. The big ball. 
there. I see it. Let me go a little deeper here. Uh -uh. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You're supposed to cut it down the middle. Oh, sorry. I guess I'll have to do mine. So the idea is to have, like, you could do it with a runny, but take a look at that yolk. Mm. So not overdone. There you go. That's nice. Came out perfect. Mmm. So the the meat consistency is a combination of pork and beef. I added in just a little bit of chili pepper mm. or chili um, powder, and then also the Redmond's organic garlic seasoned salt. Wow. Now this this boiled egg was already done, right? So it was it wasn't one of the ones that we had pre done. I did more, mm -hmm. and then I just cooked them in the instant pot so that it would be like a soft boil. This way, when you put it in here, it would be like a medium boil. Yeah. Uh, now you could actually do it instead of cooking it for two minutes with a one minute quick release. You could do it for one minute and then a one minute slow release, which would actually give you like a runny yolk. When you cut into this, it would be mm -hmm. like a runny yolk. Uh, I'm interested to try the uh, baby back ribs. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. And again, baby back ribs are very fatty. So yeah. these are- These are nice. You've seasoned them really well. So, because we didn't do them in the smoker, we use the Redmond's smoked salt. Well, and here's the thing. Usually, I would say to myself, you're going to really miss barbecue sauce because that's what I'm used to eating with ribs. Right. But I got to tell you, the meat is very flavorful. Okay. So, here's how you know if you have good ribs. What you want to do is you pick it up, mm -hmm. and can you do that because <laughs> it just come all the way out and then you can just like literally pull the bones out yeah and you have the meat there like literally fall off the bone if you did some maria emmerich protein sparing bread if you weren't on uh on a bbb &E, yeah add a little bit of barbecue sauce mm. a couple of pickles and onions you'd have like a nice mcrib sandwich make your own mcrib you know but yeah so just pull out the it bones won't it won't make undermine what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So this came out perfect. Yeah. Uh, the balls are really good. The balls are good. They're very good. I knew I shouldn't have said that. Uh, here's where we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just going to extend this to tomorrow because I found out that my online course isn't tonight. It starts Thursday. Okay. So Thursday would be interesting because I literally have course and then our live stream. Good morning. Good morning. It is... Wednesday. It is Wednesday. I think it's day seven of beef, butter, bacon, and egg, right? Yeah. It's a little early for us, but we have a jam-packed day. We do. We have a keto audit call this morning. Yay! Which is something that we're doing with our channel supporters for our podcast, where uh, we ask people, like, would you like a little 30-minute audit to help you along with your keto journey. Maybe you're struggling with something and they sign up and then uh, we record that for our podcast. So it's I'm so excited fun. about that. We have one of those this morning. After that, I have a coaching call with the guy who's coaching us for podcasting. And then we are doing another check-in for beef, butter, bacon, and egg, right? This week is just like zooming by. It is. I in can't a believe it's already way. Wednesday. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things I did want to mention for those of you who are doing the coaching program or the challenge course uh, for beef, butter, bacon, and egg, uh, there is always a password to get into Crowdcast. And Crowdcast, you do have to download and make an account, um, but it just allows us to uh, interact with you more. Right. Which is why we're using Crowdcast. And so, with each other. Uh, I like the fact that you can post up your questions and you can raise your hands and different things like that. So it's still an experiment. That's why we're doing extra ones. We promised we would do one check in a week. We're doing extra ones because I know some people have struggled with getting into Crowdcast yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, we want to make sure that if they have a question this week, it gets answered. So we're having some breakfast. I got four eggs, four slices of bacon, and a half a carnivore mug bread. I must have the other half of Rachel the mug bread. Rachel has the other half, three and three coffee uh with about uh two tablespoons of butter split between the two of us is basically two of the nespresso pods run through two times each and then put it in the vitamix look at how frothy i mean it was above the mug yeah that's because i was using the aerodust one we are going to cheat today okay 
We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go off plan of beef butter bacon egg just a little bit. And <gasps> in, in what way? When we eat later, uh -huh. we're gonna have another coffee experience, sort of. Okay. I don't know if this is going to work, but I made a coffee, key, uh, beef butter bacon and egg, creamy. Oh my gosh! This what is in there? This. I, again, I don't know if it's going to work. There's no sweetener. There's no sweetener. But what it was, was it was coffee with four tablespoons of melted butter and two egg yolks. Wow. So using the egg yolks to emulsify the butter into the coffee. But it looks like it did separate again. So... I don't know if it's going to work. I don't even know if this is going to break our creamy machine. Because Worth a shot. they do say don't do just plain water, which is why I added so much fat to it. But we're going to have that with our other meal today. Oh my gosh. I hope it works. And we're going to finish eating and then we'll check in later on. Okay, we're going to make some dinner. We're going to have some bacon wrapped filet mignon cooked in the air fryer. I'll show you how we're going to do that. But before we do that, I'm going to do a little bit of a meal prep for some burgers. Uh, we're going to put them on the smoker at about 250 degrees and just have a whole bunch of them ready to go. Okay, so with the burgers, these are burgers that I picked up one day at Sam's Club. They were doing $5 off a package. They're prime rib burgers. Uh, look really good. Uh, this one is giant compared to the rest of them. Look at how big that one is compared to all the rest of them. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and season these up. We're gonna use a little bit of the Redmond's organic garlic pepper and just put a decent amount on each one of these. And we're gonna put it on each side. So I'll put it on this side and then I'm gonna flip it over. And before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and press the seasonings in so we don't lose it all when we flip it over. Turn them over like this. And then I'm gonna, same thing, season the whole thing. Definitely wanna get a bunch of that salt, some of that garlic in there. So I'm gonna take these, go put them on the smoker, 250 degrees, uh, and then I'm just gonna kinda do a temperature probe in about 30 minutes. I wanna make them like rare so that we can reheat them. So I'm gonna shoot for a temperature of about 125 degrees internal temperature. Now before we actually start making the fillets, I got a little bit more meal prep we wanna do, and that is, a pork belly. Uh, Rachel really wants to have a pork belly smoked like a brisket. We actually have a great video on how to do that up here. I'm going to show you a little bit here, but it's kind of condensed version. We're not going to make the whole pork belly. We're only going to do half of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half right now, and then I'm going to cut out some other pieces and cook them in the air fryer so that they're ready to go whenever we want. And then I'm going to prepare the half for smoking it like a brisket so that we can do that tomorrow. Now one side is much thicker than the other. You can see this side is much thicker than this side. Uh, also wanted to mention when you get a pork belly in the store, what you want to do is pick it up and see how much it bends when it's been refrigerated. The less it bends, the more fat. I like to find one that's somewhere in the middle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this a, maybe a little bit more than half. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over. And on the fat side, I'm gonna score it. So I'm just gonna put it like this. And I don't wanna cut all the way through. I just wanna get some score to help some of this fat tomorrow. I want it to render down. I also wanna get some of the seasoning in here. So I'm just gonna make these X scores like this. Now this is usually easier to do if you pull it right out of the refrigerator because the fat is easier to cut through than when it starts coming up to room temperature. Now I'm gonna take some Redmond organic garlic pepper. I'm gonna coat this entire thing. You could also just use salt. You can use salt and pepper. Uh, just stay away from any of the seasonings that have a whole bunch of sugar, especially if you were doing beef, butter, bacon, and egg. Uh, and one thing I like to do is make sure I'm getting some into these scores. So. I'll like run my finger along the scores and put it in like that. Press it down. And now I'm gonna come back on the other side and do the same thing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put this onto a rack or into a pan. And we're gonna put this into the refrigerator and let it sit overnight. That's gonna allow all these spices to really get down into the meat. Now I'm gonna take the other half of this pork belly and I'm actually gonna divide it again into two. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this and cut it into small pieces and put it in the air fryer. I'm gonna switch it over to this side because it'll be easier to cut fat down instead of meat too fat. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go long way. So now that we have it into three pieces, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually come back and cut little chunks like this. Next, we're gonna grab a pan uh, because we're gonna put this in the Anova oven on air fry because we're gonna use the other air fryer for the steak. And I'm gonna put this with fat side up and make sure I'm separating them so that the air can get all around them because we want these to get really, really crisp. So we're gonna put these into the Anova oven on the air fry mode at about 420 degrees and we're gonna let it go until they're just super crispy. You want them crispy all the way around. If you're putting them in a regular air fryer, about 10, 15 minutes uh, at 400 degrees. But again, just keep checking on them. You want them to be super crispy all the way around. Now we're gonna work on the filet mignon. First thing you wanna do is preheat your air fryer. I've got a preheating already. You're looking at 375 degrees. Okay, you are gonna need some toothpicks for this, which I did not have. And we've got four nice pieces of filet here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of bacon, we're gonna wrap it all the way around like this. And I'm actually going to double wrap this. Also, very important, bring your steak up to room temperature. So we've got that there, we're gonna put another one over here, and then I'm gonna actually wrap it with two pieces of bacon because it's bacon. So we're gonna wrap it like that. Now I am using thick cut bacon because that's what I have, but this actually does work better if you have the thinner cut bacon. Uh, the bacon will crisp up a little bit more. Now we're gonna take this over here to the air fryer and just drop these in. Definitely wanna hear that sizzle. Make sure you're leaving some room for the air to get around it. And we're gonna go 10 minutes at 375. Okay, my 10 minutes is up. We're gonna go ahead and check the temperature on these for the internal temperature. And uh, so we're looking at right now, internal temperature of 95 degrees on this one. And this one is what, 114. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip these over because when you have it in the air fryer, you're only cooking really one side with the crispiness. See how the bacon on the other side isn't crispy as much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first flip them over. Then I'm gonna rotate them. So I'm gonna put this one up here. Sometimes these air fryers don't um, cook evenly. Put this one here. And we're gonna put this one in the back and this one up here in the front. We're gonna put this back in. We're gonna go to 375 degrees and we're gonna cut it for five minutes. I almost don't want to pull these out for you. Why? Because you're about to squeal like a pig. Oh my goodness, does that look gorgeous. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put all of these into a storage container because now you have like grab and go bacon or pork belly, but essentially this is bacon. And this will be good, like you can have this with some eggs for breakfast. Um, Whenever you want, you can eat it along with your dinner. I'm sure you're gonna have me put a couple of these on your plate for dinner right you now. You know, that's right. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about that. I'll have you taste it in a minute. Uh, I don't want you to burn yourself. Thank but you. what I wanna show you is, inside of this pan, there is some liquid gold. Don't dump this out. And just put some cool baking grease in here, but get yourself a baking container and just go ahead and pour this in here. What's really nice about this, I'll leave this container linked down below. What is nice is it's got this little screen to filter out all the junk. And then down below, we have pure gold. Look at that bacon grease down in there. Okay, this is the test. This is my favorite part. I actually want to get the meat part just out of the way. It's going to be hot. Mm. That's the meat. Who wants that? I want the big fat cap. How'd it come out? Okay. This looks good. Okay, here's what we have. We have 
I have three eggs because a couple of mine were smaller. Rachel's got the bigger ones. I have two big ones. And then we've got two filet mignons wrapped with two slices of bacon and a couple of slices of pork belly. Nice. Now over here we have more food. One of the things we've been talking about with our course participants is what you want to do is when you first start beef, butter, bacon, and egg, you want to get in touch with satiety. So those first couple of days, you want to eat till you're stuffed. I mean, like uncomfortably stuffed as Dr. Barry talked about. Right. Then you're going to be like, I don't really like that feeling. No, we have things that we need to do. I need to go to work. Right. I need to, you know, interact with the kids. I can't be like, well, I need to just lay down and take a nap. Yeah. So now what will happen is you'll know, okay, that feeling not so great. So we can start dialing it back just a little bit. One of the best ways to accomplish this is put what you think you can eat on a plate, just like this. I think I can eat this. Then have some more food off to the side. And if when you're done with this, at that point, if you go like, I'm still hungry, after you've been slowly eating your food, chewing your food, doing all of that, and maybe using chopsticks, you're still hungry. Now you reach over and we've got these smoked burgers. How beautiful. We've got some more of the pork belly. You could have hard boiled eggs. But what happens is, is a lot of times I think we, we're all used to being members of the clean plate club. Exactly. So no matter what you give me, I need to eat this. Right. I don't want to have to like put anything away or have any leftovers. So starting with a little bit, you know, smaller plates, but you know, starting with what you are pretty confident that you can eat is really helpful. And then if you need more, you can have more. Yeah. So now if I'm done, I'm still hungry. I'm good. But if I load all that stuff on here, I'm going to feel like, yeah, I need to finish my plate. And that may bring you to that over full feeling. Well, and if for some reason I can't finish one of these, I've already got Tupperware right next to me. I can just fork it and put it in there and now it's back in the refrigerator and I don't have to like agonize over whether or not like, oh, but if I don't eat this right now, will I like, you know, be hungry later? I don't have to have all of that like analysis paralysis. Okay, before we turn off the camera, let's go ahead and try these bacon wrapped fillets. Thanks uh, for the toothpicks, mom. They're right around a medium. Oh yeah. And uh, like I said, if you have thin cut bacon, the bacon will be crispier, but I don't have thin cut bacon. Mm. But yeah, looking in the middle, they, they are a light pink, so about medium. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Super moist. That's kind of like what bacon does, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I was wondering like, why the heck don't, do I need to like wrap things in bacon? Can I just eat bacon separately from the other meat? Of course, but it's just really nice, the moisture that bacon adds. Now, one of the things, about filet and one of the reasons I really make sure I wrap it in bacon because Rachel's never really been a fan of like not really bacon wrapped meat but filet is very lean and we need to be upping the fat so if you need to go grab some butter but we've got the pork belly we've got the bacon we've got the eggs so I'm pretty confident with where we're at mm -hmm. you know what before I have that and we turn off the camera I did not try the pork belly mm-hmm pork belly it's so good, so nice good. and crispy. And for these, I didn't put any seasoning at all on it. For the one that we're gonna make as a brisket, that's got seasoning, but these, I like to season it afterwards. And then the other piece that was left over, I put that in a Ziploc bag and that's in the freezer so we can make this another day. Okay. <sighs> we are just finishing up. I've eaten everything on my plate. Two more pieces of pork belly. I feel good. So uh, we've got our ice cream here, our, our coffee. Wannabe. Ice cream. And I'm gonna call this a fail. Think so? Um, we ran it through one, two, three, three, maybe even four cycles on the light ice cream, which is if it's icier. It's still snow. Plus a respin. And it just, it's, no. I mean, we can try it, but. It's just, hmm. I don't hate it. It's coffee flavored ice is what it is. I do not hate that. The only thing is, is I want to enjoy it. I wanted creamy. And for the amount of butter and eggs I put in there, like I need to enjoy it. Cause there is four tablespoons of butter and then two egg yolks in there. So this here, if you were looking at calories, is about seven to 700 calories. 
Wow. That's that's a lot, or 600 calories. That's that's just a lot for something that I'm not like, oh, wow, that this is, is the, best. the delicious. I'd rather eat four flat out tablespoons of butter. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to work on it. It's messing with me a little bit because of the fact that it's cold as coffee flavor, but then there's no sweetness. It's like right. weird. No, the flavor is good, but the, the problem is, is like, I wonder if you went the down to the bottom. Yeah. It's just really powdery. It's really powdery, and I don't think it's they gonna get much better. They can't all be wins. No. They can't all be wins. Well, I was really hoping the egg would help emulsify the butter mm -hmm. and make it like really creamy because of all of that fat. But it's good to have hope. It's just not enough. It really needs something else, and there's nothing else we can use on beef <laughs> butter, bacon, and eggs. Nice so try, though. It was a good try. Um, but I think we're going to end the video right here. I, I'm kind of at a wall, but I'm going to finish this. You want that little I bit. I want to finish it. So if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video that I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.